Good morning, Moodle Moot. Um, my name is uh, Brian Lake. I'm the Web Services Manager at Guilford College. This Petra Kutcher presentation today is entitled uh, Blackboard 9.1 to Moodle 2.1 in four months, or Planning and Preparing Moodle, an adventure story. Our goal was to transition from Blackboard 9.1 to Moodle 2.1 over the summer of 2011. A little bit about us. We're a fairly large college catering to the further and higher education sectors in the middle of Surrey in the UK. So I'll quickly touch on the plan, what went right, what went wrong, and what lessons we can share from the experience. So, what was the job? Let's cover the task first. We have about 1,930 courses, about 530 teaching staff, and about 23,000 registered users. We had 11 months to plan, four of those were supported by a budget, and to see the plan through, we had a database administrator, one learning technologist, and a project manager, a Moodle developer. That'd be me. Our liabilities were that we didn't have any existing training staff for e-learning. We didn't have course codes that were unique. They were unique in the student database, but not in Blackboard. And we had no register of who teaches what. We used a sophisticated method called guessing. So that's the situation as it stood. Let's move on to the plan. The technical elements and the timelines weren't the main issues. Getting the institution, its managers, its teachers, and its students on board were. The first job in any Moodle transition is to do the research. So we started by developing a comprehensive strategic plan outlining the benefits, the risks, and the resources needed. This is a fairly time-consuming and intensive task that requires strong planning, careful consideration, and a combination of interviews and surveys followed up by the business rationale. So why exactly do we want to move in terms of a business rationale? Is there a business case? Will the disruption to staff be worth the investment? How do you envision the process ending? And can you describe it now? Once you can answer these questions for yourself, you're ready to convince others, and you'll have to do a lot of convincing. Public relations are an often overlooked but vital part of a Moodle transition. People need to believe in the merits of the move. The next step in our Moodle transition was the development of a guiding document, something we could refer to that would keep us on track and was easy to digest. This was the Guilford College VLE Strategic Review. It was based on interviews and surveys of students and staff. It was also based on a detailed technical comparison of the available options in VLEs. In many ways, you're not just launching a project, you're managing a campaign. You have to convince directors, the executive team, teachers, and most importantly students, that this change is not only necessary, but desirable from their point of view. Will it save the institution money? Will it make a new method of teaching available? What are the interests and motivations of each of these groups? There's only one way to find out. Find out what they want and make those items your development priorities. So how do you do that? Well, shake hands, invite yourself to meetings. People will tell you what they want. The next step is assume none of this will go to plan. Build a contingency budget into your proposed budget for the project. What happens if someone gets sick or leaves the organization? Are you going to put in overtime? Is the schedule realistic? Do you have development partners? And most importantly, are you prepared for armchair commentary? Someone will inevitably suggest the process is flawed, or it could have been done so much easier if only you'd taken the advice they helpfully didn't offer until just now. You should have known to ask them after all, so it's your fault. We realized that there would be significant cost, functionality, and learning benefits from a move to Moodle. But as an organization, we didn't have the in-house skills to affect such a move ourselves. So we decided to go the external supplier route for the following. Server support, theme development, training, integration with data systems, and migration. We developed a supplier brief, and based on a competitive tender, we decided to work with the University of London Computing Centre as our long-term provider. So everything looks pretty good, right? We've got a plan, we've built in a contingency budget, we've talked from everyone to top to bottom in the organisation, and we have an experienced technical partner. What could possibly go wrong? The short answer? Lots. Let's look at the risks. The risks were people, partners, staff and clients, teaching staff, managers, processes, the predicted outcomes, unexpected development, what I call budget follies, changes in the technical requirements, and the technology. What Moodle version are we on? What's the compatibility with other plugins? What about migration from, of data from old systems to new ones? How do we use the new systems? What actually happened? Well, in this project, our partner was overwhelmed and they had what they confessed was a disastrous summer. So they were unable to deliver our themes, training, or technical familiarization for staff, or the migration of our data. But they did invoice for the, us for them. So this is bad, right? Not really, because as it happens, the budget, budget was frozen due to a technicality, and the only director who could unfreeze it was on holiday. But that's all that could go wrong, right? 
Well, actually, we lost a staff member. Director started announcing that one-day orientation sessions were teacher training programs, and our technical partner was taking him about a month to answer our basic support. To recap at this point, everything's fine. Doesn't sound fine, you might say, but no, no, it is, it is. Keep in mind the key things that we did. We did the research, we generated a report and built a plan, and we assumed that things would not go according to this plan. You still have your requirements, you still have a report, and you have an agreed upon strategy to get you there. Planning is the key to a successful Moodle implementation. So how do we dig ourselves out? Well, have a fallback plan. Have at least one internal source of Moodle exper expertise and knowledge. The Moodle community is your new best friend. Do not be afraid to exploit them mercilessly. They won't mind. We identified freelance programmers and vendors from the community who could adapt Moodle 1.9 uh, Blackboard import to work with Blackboard 9.1 and convert the finished result to Moodle 2.1. We identified a New Zealand-based provider of comprehensive training for teachers. They're called Moodle Bytes. They licensed us an online training program for a fraction of the in-person training cost. This allowed us to offer comprehensive training to all staff in a common curriculum. We created a two-page guide on cardstock, suitable for propping up next to a computer screen. These were distributed at all libraries and reception desks at our three campuses. We essentially gave them out like candy at all staff briefings. And so, where are all the technical bits in this presentation? What did we accomplish? Do the numbers really matter? Well, yes and no. The detailed technical problems did arise, and they had to be solved. But surprisingly, these were the easiest issues to deal with. You can hire temporary help, or you can build a project team to deal with this, or you can walk into your contractor's office and sit there until they explain themselves and commit to do the job. These are relatively easy problems to manage. But the main thing is that perceptions count. What you cannot do is define or dictate social perceptions. Consensus building and relationship maintenance have to go on throughout the project. Allies must be identified who will support you. Critics must be addressed without your being confrontational as a reflex. And legitimate complaints must be recognized, addressed, and resolved. One quick example. We created a successful method for migrating materials with about a 95% accuracy rate. However, it didn't mimic the structure of Blackboard, so a certain amount of tidy-up was necessary in each course to reorganize material. Because the 500-odd staff weren't adequately prepared for this when the project was launched, there was a widespread perception that the project hadn't gone that well. This is a good example of technically succeeding, but socially failing. All the systems worked, and designed as they were, the take-up was excellent. But the teachers hadn't been prepared for what success might look like, so debate raged and there was no broad agreement on what it should look like and what they were reasonably expected to do. It was difficult and therefore bad. So the lesson in the end is that there's a balance in the Moodle project, technical and social. You're building a highly complex system, but the end users desire simplicity and continuity. They want the system to work like before, except better. The real challenge of a Moodle migration is ensuring that the perceptions of the system match your ambition. And that's it. Thanks very much. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there with you today, uh, but I hope you have a great conference and hope to see you next year.